Hello, I am Keshali Sandhan Sabal from 9th grade Real Academy Alibaba branch. Today, I would like to share with you some interesting information about life on Mars. Mars, it is the fourth planet, second smallest planet in the solar system and is also known as Red Planet. Conditions on Mars around 4 billion years ago were very similar to that of the Earth. Mars is the only planet which humans can inhabit in their future uh, for long term. Possibility of life on Mars There is a slight chance that microbial life exists on Mars even today. Perhaps under the ice caps in the subsurface lakes detected by a European rover. Locations like this could protect life for, from harsh conditions on the planet's surface. On Mars, we see volcanoes, canyons, impact basins, very similar to that we see on Earth. In fact, most of the physical land features are similar to that of the Earth. It is the most widely searched planet for life. But today, no proof of present or past life has been found on Mars. Some of the phenomena that gave a thought of life on Mars. The Mars Thibon. NASA's Curiosity rover found something that resembled a Thibon on the Martian surface. Some of the people thought it to be a remain of a mysterious Martian. However, NASA later explained that it might be a rock resembling the Thibon. So it was not a fossilized remain of any mysterious Martian. However, Mars never likely had oxygen, enough oxygen to support more complex organisms. Second was Mars direct light. NASA's Curiosity rover sent back a curious photo in 2014, showing a blip of light on the horizon of Mars. The image excited UFO fans who speculated about the light source, wondering it to be the evidence of uh, alien activity. However, NASA later explained that the light source, like the blip of light, was caused because of cosmic ray hit. It was the result of high energy particles flying through space. Why is Mars conducive for life? The planets far away from the sun, for example, Pluto has freezing cold climate, whereas the planets which are near to the sun, for example, Mercury and Venus, have to face the intense, intense sun rays. So the life is impossible in these cases. Now, the remaining planets are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So they are known as gaseous giants, so they don't support life. And now the only remaining planet is Mars, which is uh, with its basic makeup similar to that of the Earth. Discoveries on Mars. After recognizing the possibility of life on Mars, the NASA launched uh, first rover on Mars in 1997. Till date, 49 spacecrafts have been launched on Mars, including the unsuccessful ones such as orbiters, rovers. One of them is Mission Mangal or the Mangalyaan of India. India is the only and the first country to launch its orbit in its first attempt. On the 1st July 2008, Sony Phoenix Mars Lander, a Mars rover, confirmed the presence of water in the form of frozen ice on Mars. Mars has a solar atmosphere. Challenges to life on Mars What are the two important things that, we, that are essential for life? Water and air, right? Mars has atmosphere, but oxygen is negligible in its atmosphere. Also, the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure of Mars is 0.6% that of the Earth. That means it is very low. Hence, the frozen ice on Mars, instead of turning to liquid water, sublimates to form gas. Also, the atmosphere of Mars is very thin that the sun rays after entering the Martian surface reflect back into the space. And the gravitational force of Mars is three times lesser than that of the Earth. Also, the Mars doesn't have magnetic field. The solution of the problem lies in its roots. As we know the problems, we can definitely search for its solutions. The first problem is of atmosphere. Atmosphere of Mars is very thin, which results in its low atmospheric pressure. To come to these, we would have to make the atmosphere of Mars thick and dense. For this, we would have to search for a source in space with abundant nitrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Comets, luckily, we found comets which are full of oxygen, uh, nitrogen, carbon dioxide and frozen ice. We would have to make these comets move from their orbits and bombard them on the Mars surface. But a comet has only 5% of nitrogen in it. A medium-sized comet uh, has only 5% uh, nitrogen in it, so we would need around uh, 10,000 comets to be 
bombard it on Mars surface to make the atmosphere favorable for human life there. This indeed is a difficult solution, but this solution can come to many of the problems. The second problem is of liquid water. The Earth has thick and dense atmosphere, so it insulates the sun rays thereby keeping the temperature constant. The same mechanism would make the Mars warmer. Hence, the frozen ice, instead of turning to gas by sublimation, would turn into liquid water. But if whole of the frozen ice on Mars turns into liquid water, it would form 35 meter deep oceans, and that again would be a challenge for land based life on Mars. This problem can be solved by excavating huge craters on Mars which would accommodate water. The water on evaporation would turn into water vapor to form clouds. The clouds would bring rain and thus the water, water cycle would emerge on Mars. Seasons would gradually develop on Mars. All this would make a red planet turn into a blue planet. Third problem is oxygen. And it's up in its initial stage, Earth too lack oxygen. But today we have around 21% of oxygen in our atmosphere. How was it possible? It was possible only because of the cyanobacteria or the blue green algae. We can make this bacteria release into the Martian water so that on multiplying they would make available profuse of oxygen in the Mars atmosphere. Gravity and the magnetic field is also a problem. Chains of electromagnets can be made to revolve around the Mars, generating the gravitational force. Also, the magnetic force generated would prevent the uh, entering of harmful rays into the Mars atmosphere. We do have solutions for the problems, but it is extremely difficult to apply them. NASA, SpaceX, and ESO are the and other space agencies are trying really very really hard to counter these problems. Now the question arises, why should we colonize another planet? We do have our own mother earth. But we should colonize another planet for the long term survival of human civilization and also the terrestrial life. It would act like plan B in the event of natural or human made disaster on our own planet. With all this, it is equally important to save, protect and conserve our mother earth. As colonizing on other planet is not a cup of tea. Here, I would like to thank the Real Academy for giving us a precious opportunity to present our views on the most interesting topics in science. Thank you.